Blessings, bless the Lord. Good afternoon. Welcome. Welcome. God bless you. I'm just going to wait until um, others join. Blessings, good afternoon. Thank you for coming. Thank you for joining. Um, I don't know if um, Facebook has put on their restrictions. At the moment, I cannot tell who has joined. Um, I know last week I got censored because I had play, I was playing some music. And so um, I don't know if the same thing is happening this week. But I'm just going to start. I want to thank you. My name is Michael Reginald. And thank you for joining the Fresh Wind Hour. And as usual, before I even continue the first thing that we do is worship because um we first thing that we do is to give the lord god the praise that is due to him and as usual before one second wow oh the broadcast is breaking oh. one second one second let me get these things dealt with yeah we're having an um bad weather today so it's possibly it's affecting the broadcast hallelujah christ has won the victory hallelujah Christ has won the victory. Hallelujah. Christ has won the victory. Christ has won the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ has won the victory. Christ has won the victory. He's won it for you and me. Hallelujah. Christ has won the victory. He has won the victory. Christ has won the victory. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ has won. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless your name and we glorify you. We thank you, King of Kings and our Lord of Lords. We magnify the blessed name of Jesus Christ. We thank the Lord because he has won the victory. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, Rory, Tamika, God bless you. Thank you. Um, today I started a bit late, so let me apologize for that. But um, nonetheless, I'm going to go into the lesson. And i um, going to explore dove's eyes. Dove's eyes. And I'm continuing the series. 
the lifestyle of the fabulously free. It's in the series I'm unlocking keys that help us to walk in victory, that help us to prosper, to help us to maintain that Christian life that gives us a platform from which we may accelerate, from which we may grow. And one of the things that um, with the ministry that God has given me, we help to provide coaching, life coaching that takes you from zero to hero. And so it is important that we understand or walk with God and how we may walk in victory. And we're looking at, we're using the lifestyle of a man who walked in freedom. He had an invisible force field around him. And this force field was there 24 7. He lived 2,000 years before Christ and um, he was ahead of his time. This man had an in Penny treble force field. It could not be breached. And this person was none other than Job. And Job lived the life of the fabulously free. And because he had an, that invisible force field, and the Bible calls it an edge, he prospered in everything that he did. And he was so prosperous that Satan was upset because everyone was able to look around and to say and to see how much he prospered. And so the people wanted to know the God that he served. And he served in a time when most people worshipped false gods. And he and his family served the living God. And they were an example that provoked many others. And so we are being taught to live the lifestyle of the free. And this is one thing that Satan does not want you to know at all. He doesn't want you to know how to walk in freedom from him. And we're continuing this series. And today we're looking at something that's very, very important. We are examining the dove and the nature of the dove and um, in the bible there are various animals i heard an apostle um sometime last year the apostle was preaching and he said um let's get rid of all the holy animals out of the church let's get rid of them you know um there have been too much focus on them but I believe that it is important that we have these animals, not to worship, as some do, to create statues and to worship, but to understand their nature and how it applies to us as saints of the living God. Because the animals that are used, the ox, the lamb, the ram, the dove, um, these have tremendous significance, tremendous significance. Now, the doves are very important. And we can look at Songs of Solomon. And in some, if you have the NIV, it says Songs of Songs, because in some of the Bible transcripts that um, they translated from, it didn't say Song of Solomon, but Songs of Songs, meaning that these were the greatest songs. And they were the greatest songs, songs that were greater than the Psalms, simply because they spoke of the covenant relationship between the bride and the bridegroom. They explored and revealed the intimacy of the relationship. And when we examine Songs of Solomon, when we examine it and the Holy Spirit begins to open it to us, we realize the love relationship that God has always had for his people. And this is why it's called the greatest song, because it's not glorifying Solomon, but it's glorifying the bridegroom. 
It's glorifying him and revealing his nature and his intimate relationship with the bride. And there are various things that are stated in it, like the bride chamber, which we must have an understanding of because uh, we as a bride of Christ must understand the things that await us in the chamber because he's coming back for a bride that has been redeemed, the bride that is spotless, a bride that understands herself, a bride that knows her nature and her call. And so the bride must understand the call and the song of the lover. At the weddings there, at weddings there is a song that the bride and the bridegroom dances to. Um, if you have attended a wedding, you will see, and this is a moment that everyone looks forward to. The songs that are played, everyone, those songs normally they speak of love and um, everyone loves them. But that moment when the bride and the bridegroom is together, it's, um, and they're dancing on the dance floor, there is an aroma. There is a fragrance that comes from it that fills the entire atmosphere. And because their spirit is one in that moment, it is, it is graceful, it is beautiful, and it is something that we all leave wishing that we had this and that even in our relationship, that in our marriage, that this will continue. Because we feel the connection of the bride and the groom. We feel it. It echoes in our spirit. It echoes to us. And in Songs of Solomon 2, 14, My dove in the clefts of the rock, in the hiding place on the mountain side, show me your face. Let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet and your face is lovely. Catch for us the foxes, the little foxes that ruin the vineyards. Our vineyards that are in bloom. It is love that is blooming. It's love that is blossoming, that sends forth a fragrance that all is drawn to. It's a sweet odor. Sometimes in the interaction with us and the Lord as we are in worship, as we are in prayer, you may smell a sweet aroma that fills the atmosphere, that fills the entire atmosphere and fills everywhere. And this is because it is the it is the love that we have for the Lord that is being poured out at that moment, and our prayer or our praise, our worship goes before Him as a sweet, savory incense offering. Sweet offering. There are times in worship that the Lord will open up that spiritual sense where I'm smelling it. I don't know if. You have experienced this before and you can ask him to let you smell that. Just let him ask him if your worship pleases him. Ask the Lord, what is your life like before him? And you asked him to let you to let you know the smell that it brings in his nostril. And just wait for it. Ask. And in that moment, you will feel the room will fill with the odor. 
um, this is something that I have done a few times. I've asked the Lord while in worship and pressing in, and the room, room becomes filled with that odor. Songs of Solomon 4.1 How beautiful you are, my darling. How beautiful. Your eyes behind your veil are doves. Your hair is like a flock of goats descending from Mount Gilead. Ooh. The hair, the flock of goats, the goats that were kept in that time were normally black. And so when as they descend down Mount Gilead, they would look on the side of the hill. You would see the goats gracefully coming down on the rocks, climbing down on the mountain side, and they would be it would be a very beautiful sight. And he's referring to the here of the bride in this manner. And that's a different revelation, not one that I'm even going to explore at this time. I'm going to focus on the dove. Bless you, um, Prophet Erlington. Bless you. Bless you. Um, I'm going to call you um, shortly um, today. I was planning to call you um during the week. I hope you are, you won't be busy. But um I my plan to, I was planning to call you in the week and the Holy Spirit says um call you today. So the the Bible in Songs of Songs the greatest song we have the dove being referenced in Second in Second Samuel's um sorry Songs of Solomon two fourteen and in four and verse one. Now there's something that we must understand about the dove and why the dove is used. The dove is used here prophetically because it speaks to the nature of Jesus Christ, and it also alludes to what occurred when he was baptized by John the Baptist. And I'm going to get to that, but let's just look at this alone right now, because there is a revelation in it that is important for all of us. All of us, we must understand what it means to have the nature of the dove and also to have dove's eyes because the Lord wants us to have that eyes, those eyes, those eyes that belong to him. Now, one thing we must understand about the dove is that the dove is one of the only birds that when it mates, it mates for life. As a matter of fact, researchers say it is the only, only avian, only bird that mates for life. When its mate dies, it never seeks another. And both the male and female dove work together to tend to the young. The male will even take time to sit on the eggs and to, while they're hatching, while they are in the nest before they hatch to ensure that the female goes out to, to get food or he will carry food to her. And even after they're hatched, he will take, he will participate fully in the upbringing of the young ones, not just going out and looking food and carrying it back in but he also helps them he will go out find food and carry it back in and give it to the young ones now what i want us to examine and what i want us to focus on is the devotion of the dove it's singular devotion the dove mates once and it never looks for another it doesn't matter whether the mate has died 
the dove remains attached. Its heart was already given and it never, ever, 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 ever goes for another. Never. Never. Now, when Jesus was baptized in Matthew 3, 16 to 17, when Jesus was baptized, the Bible said, in that moment, the heavens, the heavens were open and the spirit of the Lord descended like a dove and lighted on him. So the power of the Holy Spirit came on him, rested on him. And in that moment, a voice was heard from heaven. And this is the voice of the father saying, this is my son, my beloved son, whom I am well pleased. Why was, why did the father make that declaration? Why would he have done what he did? Because there was something about the nature of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that from he was born, his devotion and his singular devotion to his father, his heavenly father, that caused him to receive this anointing. It was a devotion that was proven in his attachment and his dedication to his earthly parents. Because the Bible tells us that from the age of eight, when he went to the temple, he was there questioning the physicians and the scribes and the teachers of the law. He was questioning them about the law. An eight-year-old and the questions that he asked them marveled them because they wondered how he knew this. How did he have this wisdom? Because his father was a simple tradesman and it meant that he would not have had that education. But note what happened after, because after his parents left and for days he was not with them. And when they searched for him among his relatives because they were traveling, they were part of a caravan, a whole company of, um, of, of Jews who had gone back to their hometown to pay their taxes, to go to, sorry, who had gone to Jerusalem to offer up the sacrifice and observe the Passover and they were going back home. And they noticed after many days, they realized he was not with them. They thought he was with his cousins. And after checking with the cousins, he was not there. Can you imagine the kind of panic, the, um, the frustration, the, um, how they felt absolutely everything that was happening with them, the, the, exp the emotions that they had in that moment? I mean, if you have, if, if you have ever had a child going missing or your, whether it's your child or you're taking care of someone's child and, in, a mo in that moment, you can't find them. It causes panic. It causes panic and dread. And they searched and then they said, you know what, let's go back. And when they went back for him, they were astonished that he was still in the temple. He hadn't wandered off as some children would do. He was still in the temple and he was there teaching. He was teaching and not teaching actually because he was eight years old he was asking questions of the authorities and everyone was there looking at him just scratching their heads but after that his parents took him and the bible said that although when they asked him why did he do this he said don't you know that i must be about my father's business at Eight years old, there was already formed in him an understanding of who his heavenly father was and his purpose, why he was born and the destiny 
that he was called to fulfill. The destiny towards his focus was singular. There was nothing else that got his focus. There was nothing else that got his attention. It was singularly focused singularly focused on one thing and it was just what the prophet sorry i'm re i was reading that novelette is through me <laughs> welcome novelette and um prophet charlotte welcome as well and um lorna welcome god bless you um he was singularly focused singularly focused on what he needed to do but at that time, he knew that it was not time to step out as yet. He had not come to the age and had not gotten the release to go. And the Bible said that he left and he went with his parents. And from that day, he was subjected to them. And the word subjected is very, very significant because it meant that in all things, all things that they told him to do, he acknowledged them and was very, very dedicated to them. The process that God takes us through before he elevates and he builds us up and he establishes us is one of submission. We must first submit to an earthly parent before we reach the point where the Lord will take us where we become, where he may guide us individually and he may even take us and um, isolate us. Jesus fulfilled that submission. And because he was so committed in his submission, he was qualified to receive this anointing. The anointing of the dove, the anointing that came down and rested on him, when that came on him, his very nature and his heart was now knitted with God. He was now singularly focused on his father. More now more than ever, there was a commitment in his heart. A commitment to do the will of the Father more than ever. You see, before it was okay. I'm gonna do the, the I'm gonna do what I'm called to do, and God, you know, I'm having this struggle. But when that anointing came on him, when that fresh fire descended on him, from that moment he stopped wavering. It was no longer, okay, I may do this, I may not do that, and it's not time yet. But his focus was on simply doing what he was called to do. So much so, and he became so yielded to the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit drove him into the wilderness. You see, there are times when the Holy Spirit will move us. I know that the Spirit is subjected to the prophet, but there are times when the Holy Spirit will move us, and the Holy Spirit doesn't move us without our permission. But if we are completely yielded to him, the Holy Spirit will move us to do something. Because then he's not taking over our nature and our, our will and suppressing our will but he's acting in accordance with our will which is simply to do the will of the father at any cost and so the holy spirit will move us he will cause us to say something he will cause us to do something and jesus was driven into the wilderness to be tempted he was walking and going somewhere and he didn't know the destination. He didn't know where he was going and what would come. But he went willingly. Willingly. He went without any resistance. 
And it is because he had the spirit of the dove, because his heart was completely sold out for God. That is why when Satan came with the temptations, his response was, I don't care what you're coming with. I'm not going to betray my father. I'm not going to betray the one who has my heart. Yes, I've endured hunger. Yes, I've endured hardship because I've been in this wilderness for 40 days. And I've been here 40 nights. I've been with the wild animal and the beasts. I've been here with them. And I'm extremely hungry. But for a morsel of bread, I'm not going to misuse what God has given me. I will not sell out and give in to mammon. I will not use it for that purpose. Because I will not betray him who calls me from my mother's womb. I will not betray him. Jesus was resolute. This is why before he had done absolutely anything, the father could declare, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. The father has made that declaration concerning some of you. He has called you beloved because he understands that come what may, you will not sell out. You see, one of the things about the dove, which was very significant also, is that the dove would always return to its home. When the dove is set free, it would always find its way back home. What am I saying? What does it mean? How does it relate to you? A dove has in it a remarkable owning system, a way of always finding its home. The dove never feels as if it's homeless. The dove never feels as if it's forsaken because if the dove is carried far from home and released into the wild or released anywhere that's far from home, you bet you, you can count your last dollar, the dove will find its way right back home. During the previous world wars, doves were used as messengers. Doves were used because they could send out the dove with the message and the dove would always find its way home. It delivered the message and it would return. So that it was always reliable with us. Sometimes we are sent out. And when things do arise, when we have the nature of the dove, regardless of whatever is comes regardless of whatever happens because the tempter will come the tempter will try something but when we have the eyes of a dove we will always come right back home because home is where the heart is it's where the heart is the heart always find back its place always goes there, always returns there. Um, there is also another bird that has similar characteristics to the dove. It's very similar, very, very similar. But that bird is one that will stray from home. Once it's challenged, it will stray. It will go far. Genesis 8 and verses 6 to 7 said, After 
Forty days Noah opened the window he had made in the ark and sent out a raven. And it kept flying back and forth until the water had dried up from the earth. Moses sent, sorry, Noah sent out two birds. Now we know the story of Noah. There was a tremendous flood that covered the entire earth and only Noah and his family was within the ark. They were the only ones and they had all the animals, clean and unclean animals. And they sent out after 40 days, all the rain had stopped and everything. And so Noah wanted to know if there was now dry ground, if he could open the ark and they could come out. And so he sent the raven out. And what the raven did was the raven did not return home. The raven went back and forth and back and forth all over the place. And it stayed. It never came back to him. And this is significant. Because when you examine the dove and the raven, there are some things that are very similar about them. Both will choose a mate and they will stick to their mate. But closer observation of the raven has shown that the raven will cheat. The male raven will cheat. He will go into the nest of another raven. When the male has left, the other male will go over to, to mate with the female raven that has been left alone. This is not in the nature of the dove. What am I saying? Sometimes when we find ourselves shifting away from God, when we have that ease and we think that it's okay, when eyes are not of us, and we are walking and going into the camp of the enemy to dine with the enemy, to dance with the enemy, and then we come back in. You know, the Loving Dear has a song about, um, what's it called again? Um, six days a week, um, one day Christian. Yes. The raven may not be a one day Christian, but the raven thinks that it's okay for it to sneak out and to do what is necessary, do what its heart desires simply because eyes are not on it. Yes, <laughs> they do. They, they do. Ravens do play room for rent apply within. <laughs> they do. And it's not very often that they do. It's not very often, mind you, because the raven te will tend, most raven will stick to their mate. But once that mate is gone, the raven is going to go and seek another. Welcome, Anthony. Bless you. The raven will go and seek for another. It will always do this. But notice the dove never ever seeks for another that dove remains until it dies it's the dove the dove's word once a dove has given its word the dove's um word is final and so the dove says to its mate when the mate is going listen babe i will see you on the next side i'm gonna see you trust me i'm gonna i'll be joining you there is that level of commitment that the dove has. Now the raven will play room for it. It will go. But the raven is also, the dove has a very restricted diet. It eats a very small number of things and it doesn't move from this. But one of the things about the raven and that has caused it to be so resilient over the years is that the raven will consume anything consume anything 
whatsoever. It's an omnivorous bird. It will eat human flesh. It will eat um, carrion. It will eat whatsoever is necessary for it to survive. Anything. And so this is why when Noah released the raven, the raven never came back. But what the raven did was to was to travel back and forth, back and forth until the ground had dried up. It found places that it could perch, that it could land. And it never came back. And we must understand that when God wants to trust us, and God wants to shift us and to move us to another level. If we are to walk in victory, if we are to be victorious and we are to live that kind of lifestyle that Job had where he had an impenetrable force field around him. I remember Job lived 2,000 years before Christ, which is over 4,000 years ago. But he was the first man. He was way ahead of his time. He was the first man to have a force field. The Bible calls it an edge. It's an edge of protection that God placed around him because he was so devoted to God. So devoted to God that Satan could not touch him. And every single thing that Job did, Job prospered immensely. When we have the nature of the dove, we are equipped for war. One will always find our way home in the cleft of the rock. We will always find our way back there. Remember that second Songs of Songs 2.14 said, My dove in the clefts of the rock, in the hiding place on the mountain side. This is where the dove dwells. It dwells in the secret place of the Most High. It dwells in the place of safety. The dove dwell also, because it dwells in this place, the dove is very, very intimate with its lover, it beholds, it sees the face of the lover. Show me your face. Let me hear your voice for your voice is sweet and your face is lovely. It beholds the face of its lover. When we have that singular devotion to the Lord, and when we seek him with our whole heart, he will reveal himself to us. I dare you, I dare anyone, ask the Lord. You said, Jesus, if you are real, reveal yourself to me. If you are real, reveal yourself to me. And you continue to press and ask him to reveal himself. When you seek him, because he will appear to you. He will definitely show himself to you when you're seeking him with that singular focus, with that heart that is completely focused to him, on him. And so when we are hiding in him, he will reveal himself to us. And when we have a true encounter with God, our life never remains the same. Amen? Our life never remains the same. I don't care what, where we have come from, what we have done, who we have been with, and all the things that we loved before. When we have had that encounter with him and our focus is singularly on him, and it doesn't mean that we are so focused that we are only, we are just focused on heaven and nothing in this world. We have no 
purpose in this world because when we have that nature we don't have what we have is religion because we are called to do his will and if we understand the heart of God it presses us and causes us to long to even do far more for mankind than we possibly can because we understand that he loves his people and his desire is that all will be saved and will come to the knowledge of him. And so we will look at even our life and to see where it's at and to start making those changes. But we're not even going to run ahead to do it because that's a thing with the raven. The raven eats anywhere. The raven eats anything but the dove will only eat a very focused and concentrated meal. That's what the dove will eat. Because the raven will go and pick, take anything that's available because it's only about survival. The dove will die before it eats something else. What am I saying? Let me make this plain. When we have dove's eyes, our Diet, our talk, our desire will be the things of God, the things of the Father. That is what we will long for. That is what we will hope for. That is what we will chase after. That is what we will chase after. We will seek his face and not his hand. It's his face that we will seek. And we, when we seek his face, whatsoever is in his hand, it will be granted to us. You know, um, Benny Hinn said one day he was sitting in his father's lap and he did something. And he said that day his father, who was always a very stern man and they feared him and because of how stern he was that day, he did something as he sat in his father's lap, as he looked up as his father. And he said that he knew he had his father because that moment his father's heart was completely open to him. And his father said to him, whatsoever you want, I'll give it to you. When we have dove's eyes and we seek the face of our Savior because our eyes will be locked, singularly focused, that's to be our drive, our motivation. When we seek the face of our Savior, then he reveals himself to us and when he reveals himself to us, Everything that is in his hand, everything that he has for us is released. And what he releases to us can never be taken. It can never be held back. It can never be stopped. It can never be hindered. As he reveals himself to us, our very nature, how, how we operate, how we behave, how our mindset, how we think about ourselves, all of that changes because as he reveals his, his, his face to us, as he reveals himself to us, his nature, we become, we're taking on that very aspect of him. We are taking on his supremacy. We are taking on his glory. We are taking on his power. We are taking on his wisdom. We are taking on his knowledge because we are being bathed in its light. We are basking in that glory and that changes us completely. It changes us. And when you have had that, you never, ever, ever seek for anything else. There is something about being in the presence of God and tasting of it and its riches that is addictive. 
I think that's the only way that I can truly describe it. Because you long for it. You long for that embrace. And you constantly go back to it. It doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter what may come. You constantly go back to it. Always. After Noah had sent out the raven, after he had sent out the raven and it never came back, this is what he did. Genesis 8, verse um, 8. Then he sent out a dove to see if the water had receded from the surface of the ground. But the dove could find no place to set its feet because there was water over all the surface of the earth. So it returned to Noah in the ark. He reached out his hand and took the dove and brought it back to himself in the ark. He waited several more days again and sent out the dove from the ark. After he had released the dove, remember he sent out the raven before, but the raven never returned. The raven may have very well come back and perched on the roof of the ark, but it never came back to him. The dove came right back. And when the dove came back, Noah stretched out his hand and the dove came in his hand. And because the dove returned and the dove didn't have anything, he knew that the water was still there. Because the dove maybe would have spent a longer time before returning, but it came right back home. Unlike the raven. Verse 11. When, when the dove, this is he released the dove after several more days. When the dove returned to him in the evening, there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. Then no one knew that the water had receded from the earth. The dove, notice the dove came right back to Noah. After it flew around for quite a, some time, it came right back to Noah. And this time it carried back something to him. It carried back the olive branch, the leaf of the olive, it carried that back to him. And when he, it carried that back, and even what it carried back to Noah was very significant. The olive, the olive represents, the olive is used in the anointing oil. The olive is also used here in the beak of the dove. It symbolizes that God had also now established peace. Everything on the earth was now at rest. There was peace. And it was an assurance to know that he could go forth. I want us to notice that Despite the opportunities that the dove had, the dove returned home. The dove could have rested anywhere. It could have stayed. But the dove flew right back home to its master. Although it spent hours out there, it came right back. When we have dove eyes... Because our heart is knitted to God, we never depart from him. We never ever depart from him. And one thing we must also understand about the dove and the nature of the dove is that the dove is so gentle that the dove has to be protected by its owner, by its master. This is why God requires that we have the nature of the dove. And in our moment, in our commitment to him, 
in the trials and in the testing, he will grant us this anointing. He will grant us this anointing that will descend on us after we have gone through because there is a process where God tests the heart. He allows a test to come and it proves our heart. But when we remain focused, focused on God, we'll understand that after we have gone through that, we will, remain, we will be triumphant because no matter what comes, we will be so steadfast in God that we will be unshakable, immovable. This is what it is to live the lifestyle of the free, the fabulously free. Because Satan really hates when we are free from him. He hates when we have the eyes of a dove because then when he comes, we will be able to withstand him. We will be able to overcome his schemes and his plots and we will be victorious. We will be successful in everything. No matter what comes, we will be successful. If we look at Job, because Job, this was the even the nature of Job and his reverence, his fear for God was such that he shunned evil. No matter what Satan did to Job, Job never yielded. And because he never yielded, ultimately in the end, he was triumphant. And every single thing that he lost was restored because God is a restorer. And for the trouble, he will give double. He will give double. The Lord will pour out, double will be given, and the word of the Lord will come. The word of the Lord will come unto you. In your darkest hour, in your moment of weakness, the word of the Lord will come to you. And say, Isaiah 43, 18 to 19, Forget the former things. Forget what has happened before. Forget what is past. Do not dwell on the past. That's Isaiah 43, 18. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. When you're in a desert, a desert is just a vast land that has no, there's nothing, normally nothing is built on a desert. It's just sand that's there. It's a land that is barren. It's been cursed. Because the fact that the, the fact that there's no rain and this land is dry, it's a land that has been cursed. One sign of God's blessing is rainfall and consistent rainfall. The desert doesn't receive it. And the desert is dry. And because it's dry, people do not normally live there. And so there are no roads that will help you to get a very clear, to know exactly where you're going. So you can easily be lost in the desert. During the dry seasons, we can become lost. These are the seasons of extreme hardship that do come. And they do come because... The Bible says that there will be evil days. But when we have gone through and we've been faithful and we have held fast the confession of our faith, the Lord 
will make a way where there is no way. Where there is no way, he will make the way. Where there is dryness, he will cause streams to come up. Streams mean that he will cause abundance and God will do this in his time. If we faint not, we will receive the reward that awaits us. Job never fainted. Job continued to trust and to believe in God despite all that happened. And in the end, everything was restored. Everything. And it was restored many times to him. Many times. For your trouble, God will grant double. God will grant double. Double for what you have endured. And he will wipe away all tears from your eyes. God will allow the tests to become a tremendous testimony. Tremendous testimony that will establish you. A tremendous testimony that will be a blessing to many, many others. Be focused. Maintain your gaze upon Jesus. Maintain your eyes on him. Keep that singular focus. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. And ask that the Lord gives you dove's eyes. That this will rest upon you. And that this will abide on you. So that you will be victorious in all things. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord God. For your grace. We thank you, Lord. For your equipping work in us. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you release unto your people the anointing of the dove. That, Father, just as the Spirit alighted and rested upon Jesus in the form of a dove, that this will be so for your people, that they shall be Come instruments of peace, your peace, that the enemy cannot stand and that the enemy cannot fight against. Because Lord God, when a man is at, is at peace, Lord God, when he finds acceptance and love in your sight, then even his enemies will be at peace with him. Lord, there are so many persons that are even here on this broadcast who have been troubled and they have struggled in their walk. Because, Lord, no matter what it seems that they do, that they are pressed down. Father, thank you, Lord, that by your spirit, you are breaking, breaking the delays. And that your promise has been fulfilled, Lord. And that they will receive the reward for their faithfulness in this hour that they will receive that reward. I thank you that only good gifts do you give, Abba. Only good gifts. Thank you, Lord Jesus, where health is to be restored, it shall be restored, and where their finances are to be restored, and their finances will be restored, Abba. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. That what was held up, what was hindered, what was delayed, what was frustrated shall not be any more hindered. But Lord, thank you that it shall be freed. And Lord, all will call them blessed because all will see that you have shifted everything in their life. Thank you. Because the free is indeed free indeed. For who you have set free is indeed free. Thank you, Lord Jesus, because you will make a way where there is no way. Thank you that even in the desert you'll make a way. That, Lord, where there is wasteland, where there seems to be nothing that you will cause streams, ideas to flourish. You will cause them to prosper because all will understand the work that you have done. Lord, we come to you and we ask, Lord Jesus, to show us your face. Show us your face, Lord God. Reveal yourself to us, to your people, Lord. Reveal yourself, Lord, so that, Lord God, they will, Lord God, know you in all your fullness. We are in the time, Lord, where you are showing yourself to us even more. We are in the time, Lord God, where there is a greater outpouring of revelation and wisdom, where there is a greater outpouring of your anointing upon your people. Because, Lord, these are the last days. And, Father, you are changing you are making changes that, Lord, we shall see. Thank you, Lord, that you are preparing a bride that is spotless, and you are preparing a bride that is walking in power and in glory, that is walking in victory. Lord, we are a part of that bride, and we thank you that this is what you're doing in our life. Lord, even times when it seems all doors have been closed, we thank you, Lord, that you are using that to push us in the direction that you need us to go. That, Lord, where we have been afraid to enter business, where we have been afraid, Lord God, to step out on your word and to do things that you have told us to do. We thank you that you have edged us in and forced us to be very narrow in our outlook, very narrow in our focus. And Lord, where we have moved from you, where we have even stepped away, thank you that you have redeemed us and that you have set us back on the right path, God. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us into the wilderness. Thank you. For, Lord, we have gone through and now we are in the promise and we have even crossed over our Jordan. And now, God, we go in and we're fighting to receive this promise. But we thank you that we do not fight alone. You have strengthened our arm. You have strengthened our mind. You have strengthened our body. You have strengthened our mind and our heart. You have strengthened us in the inner man and prepared us for this war because we do not fight alone. But Lord, we fight with you before us. We fight, Lord God, in this hour, knowing that you have already given us the victory. 
Thank you, Lord God, that now is the hour that Satan is cast out. Thank you for the breakthroughs. Thank you for the turnarounds. Thank you for the shifts, God. Our Father, thank you, Lord God, that what has kept us down and has stopped us from going forward is removed. Lord, we forget the former things and we are pressing forward, Lord. We are pressing forward with you leading us. Thank you, Lord God, because you have moved us from our place of bondage and you have carried us into a place flowing with milk and honey with the abundance. Lord, thank you. And we thank you, Lord, for all that you have done, all that you do for us in the name of Jesus. We glorify and we thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And Father, our hope, our desire is that, Lord God, we will know with complete assurance for the rest of our lives that it's well with our soul and that it will remain well and that, Father, hold us and keep us in your hands. Lord Jesus, you said that all that has been given to you remain yours and that no one can pluck them out of your hand. May we remain in your hand, Lord. May you continue to hold us, Lord, with your unchanging nature. May you continue to hold us and to shield us, to protect us and to keep us safe out. Lord God, thank you, Lord, that in this hour you are removing religion from us. You are removing religion and you're carrying us into relationship. And Father, you're establishing us, Lord, in our purpose, in our identity. And Lord, everything that the baggages and the things that we have carried for so long that has weighed us down and that has oppressed us, that Lord, you're stripping them away. You're moving them. You're clearing them. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that as we go forward in a new devotion and a new commitment to you, that the mistakes that we have repeatedly done in the past, that we no longer make those mistakes. We no longer walk that same path. But now we walk the path of righteousness and that we walk as overcomers. We walk with the understanding that it's by your grace and it's by your mercy that we have overcome. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that the bright lights will not draw us away from you, Lord. Even the glistening of the gold will not pull us away from you, but will remain and abide in you. Because, Lord, we are in the palm of your hands. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Abba, we thank you for protecting us from the arrows that fly at day, Lord, and for the pestilence that walk at night. Thank you that you've given us health, God, and that we continue to walk in good health. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
We thank you, Lord Jesus. And we thank you that the blood shields and the blood protects us. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, that there is a bloodline, an edge of protection around us, God, because the blood of Jesus has ransomed us and the blood of Jesus protects us from the adversary. It is the blood of Jesus that covers us. The blood of Jesus that protects us. Father, I pray, O oh God, that the blood will be sprinkled over your people, Lord Jesus. We need this every day, God, to maintain our shields, God, to maintain our protection, God. Thank you because the blood upon us, Lord God, allows us to walk in complete health. The blood, Lord Jesus, also frees our mind, God. And the blood, the blood guards our heart. Abba Father, thank you for the blood. We thank you for the blood because the blood is defeated Satan. Ha! Thank you. Rade la man son do kuraba de la. Nadi di di diaba se kanda rande de 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 diaba so. Nondo lo ba yi anda de kono monda la baso ko prande de 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 se. Halele de diaba son do robo bobo se. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. Glory be to God. We magnify the Lord. We bless the name of the Lord. He is risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Roman di code basson don di la rade. Manda di kare de ba yindo do do na na ma son do re ba 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 ye ta na 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 ma si ye. Fe la man do ro bo ki enda na ma si le de 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 ya so. Thank you Abba Father. Thank you for the blood. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you God. Thank you for the blood. Thank you because, Lord God, no matter what Satan tries, no matter what Satan tries, the blood, the blood protects. The blood, the blood protects. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood. Only the blood that saves. Only the blood that washes whiter than snow. Only the blood that saves. Hallelujah, Mare Hile, de 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 Re ba 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 so kondo re ba 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 sando re ba 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 se kando ra ba ba. The Lord says, the Lord says that if you apply the blood over your dwelling, walk through your dwelling for seven days, and you plead the blood over your house and around your dwelling you're gonna see significant shifts. Some of you have been waiting on some things to come through. God says, apply the blood and watch how things clear. Watch how things clear. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you that this is even something that I've walked through this where there were some attacks that came, um, spiritual attacks that came um, against us recently. And I began to walk through and to plead the blood over the house. I began to walk through 
and all of those things that start was, was happening in the night hours they just ceased the moment and at the holy spirit would wake me at one o'clock two o'clock and i'd go into warfare and from the from i started just going through sealing the place of the blood no more no more all of that stopped not only that in the mail a refund came out of nowhere we didn't expect this money and it just came from sources that we didn't even know and it shifted something so much because that money came at a time when it was absolutely needed the blood has tremendous power in it and we can war and there are many things that we can do but we also must know how to use the blood and how to yield how to apply it in our life because when we use the blood the blood will give us victory prophetess francis god bless you woman of god god bless you thank you for joining we must understand and i'm i i know that i'm gonna i'm gonna do some teaching on the blood the blood of jesus i'm gonna do some teaching we don't talk much about the blood we talk about the anointing we talk about the glory but we don't talk much about the blood see when we apply the blood over a house even we can we don't have to use olive oil we can all we need to do is use the blood by faith we apply the blood and we will be shocked at things happen because witchcraft can't come with us it cannot a curse can't alight when we apply the blood None. Abla baba she kando robosha. Yep. Apply. We gotta sprinkle our doorposts with the blood. We have to. You know, um, I have every time that I travel and I stay like at a hotel, and um, or motel, or I stay even people's houses. When I stay there, I have to. When, if I don't, if I don't apply the blood, I always have some kind of spiritual encounter. Several times when I'm in the hotel and sometimes when I go to, and I'm so tired that I don't um, simply consecrate the place before I go to sleep. And so I may end up sleeping, but I, at about 12, one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, I will always, sometimes when I wake up and there's, I see a spirit walking in. I see a demon either standing right up near the bed. And these are real encounters that I've had. And I tell you every single time. And I've had to apply the blood of Jesus. And rebuke them. And they go. After I've consecrated the place, no more of that. No more of it. It just stops same time if i go to somebody's home i do the same no more sometimes even when you put you go somewhere and you you sleep and you start having some dreams and some things that happen it's because of the spirit the spiritual atmosphere but when you apply the blood all of that shifts it clears up completely it shit um you know what I'm not I'm that's a and that's a separate lesson and so I'm just gonna hold back right now I'm gonna hold back because I've given the lesson for the day I've given the lesson for the day but we will do a separate thing on the blood completely separate but for whatever reason God wanted someone to hear this today you need to apply the blood over your life you need Janice, God says you need to use the blood more. You need to use the blood more. You need to apply the blood. Simone, use the blood of Jesus. There's some things that have been happening around you. And God says, reduce the 
friction with the people and simply just silently go through and pray and say, I apply the blood of Jesus Christ. I apply the blood of Jesus Christ. I call for peace in this place. I thank you, Lord, for peace. Just go through, go through and do that around and watch how things change and speak less, speak less and apply the blood and watch what happens. Watch what happens in the atmosphere. Watch what happens. Apply it. All around, apply it. You can apply it on close everything because you're not, you don't even have to anoint your hands. You don't have to use anything because it's applied by faith. The Lord has told me to use water and pray over it and ask the, that the water be changed to blood and I've used that, but you do not need to use absolutely, you don't have to use oil, you don't have to use anything. It is applied by faith. Because as you go and you request and you ask God, when you're working, you ask God to apply the blood, the blood of Jesus is placed on the walls, it's placed on your doorposts, it's used to sanctify the entire house. And when it is sanctified, every demonic spirit has to go. Every evil spirit has to go. So whatever is there that's oppressing you, what is attacking you at night, you need to apply the blood before you go to sleep. There are some of you that's, uh, that has, you've been having some really horrible dreams in the night. And you need to apply the blood before you go to sleep. Apply the blood over your pillow, over your bed. Apply the blood over yourself, over the house. And make sure you do that before you go to sleep. Because what the devil has been doing is attacking you in the night and has kept you up. You need to apply the blood. There are two persons that God is telling me. That you have been having this problem. And I, I know the names. You know you've been having this problem. This consistent problems. That have been ongoing. And it's time for that change to be broken. It's time for it to be broken. Apply the blood. Seven days. Non-stop. Everything will cease. Every single thing will cease. You will not have to engage in the warfare that you've been engaging in in the nights. Let the blood work. When you apply the blood, Satan has to drop his weapon and flee. Satan hates the blood. This is why we, we find that there is not a lot of teaching on the blood now. Not a lot of teaching on the blood. I never heard a lot of thing, teaching.